So welcome back to our third episode of our documented experience of watching, reacting and reflecting on Japanese Iron Chef episodes. I'm Caitlin. And I'm Dimitri and this week's episode is the Battle Ara Seabass episode of Iron Chef. This episode was filmed in 1998. So this was filmed at the end of the year, was it? Yes. The dawn of the culinary world. Kandagawa Koshiro. Oh, so he's been on the show before. It's funny how that's like an important thing for a chef is to beat an iron chef. Like, I wonder if that's a normal thing or if that's just he's just playing into the show. I like how he's already chosen the chef. Like, he's told you, I want, I yeah. want Nakamura. He's coming for him. Uh, I guess because he's faced the other two. Already. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's probably going to mix it up before the next one. The capsicum. It's back. Do you reckon they'll still do the rise up from the ground? Oh my god, look at the people he just brought. How many Damn. people? Oh, it's just gonna be him. Oh, the music. Yes. It's like the final boss battle in a video game. Like that music oh. of this unholy presence is gonna yeah. come. Yeah. Rain. He's on a two loss losing streak. Wow. As mentioned, Nakamura lost the last two times he battled. Uh, he lost against. Uh, Keiji Azuma in the Battle Lamb episode, and he lost to Maurice Gouya in the Battle Scott. That's interesting, because he seemed to be doing all right in the other episodes that we've been watching. What was it, a five winning streak on the last one? Yep. Yeah. <gasps> Are the fish it's alive? The rise up from the ground. They must be. Oh yep. my god. Are they going to kill them ever. on the show? <gasps> yep. Look at the size of those things, Bob. Oh my god. Oh, I love the music. Oh, and this, the low angle shot of them staring down the fish. <gasps> close your eyes. They're close. close. My eyes are close. Oh. I'm not watching this part. Cutting the skin oh, okay. off. Is it, is it dead? Are they... Oh, <gasps> and that guy just chopped his head off. Nakamura just chopped the head off. Oh, that's a, ooh, that's oh, a big just... statement from Nakamura. If Nakamura loses, he will retire. Oh my god, that's from huge. From Chef. But he's like our man. He's our guy. Yeah. Nakamura's our dude. Hello. Mr. Mr. Korn. Fresh sunny, buddy. So I looked into this Mr. Korn character. Uh, he is a rapper from Japan. Uh, fun fact, he voices Chef in the Japanese version of South Park. And he has participated in six episodes as a judge on Iron Chef. You would never see that on TV in Australia. You'd never see a chef chopping off a fish head, a live fish head. Maybe a dead one, but never a live one. Probably would be a bit dangerous to be using fish stomach these days with the amount of like plastic the and stuff that they eat. Liver, intestines, and stomach. Nice, yum. God bless the commentator. Where oh, we would be without him. I was like, what's he gonna do with the bricks? So I've done a little bit of research into the challenger chef Kandawaga. Um, so he actually started cooking, he started his cooking profession at 16. Um, and he tends to do that whole entourage thing with a couple of the episodes that he's been in. Um, and he's kind of like the leader of those other chefs as a kind of this sort of faction of chefs who kind of believe in the purity of Japanese cuisine. Um, and he's also appeared in a lot of the, a lot through the rest of the show, through the series. Um, he's attended as a special guest. Um, he's attended as a consultant to a challenging chef. And he's attended as sort of um, just a viewer and he's kind of watching with the rest of the Iron Chef through a couple of other challenges. So he's actually done a lot more than just cooking in the show and he seems to be a regular contestant for a lot of the series. <gasps> oh, the head! No! You learned some pretty cool cooking techniques in here. Like innovative and out of the box thinking that you wouldn't see on most television shows in Australia. <laughs> like the most innovative thing I've seen on my kitchen rules is when she couldn't cook the crackling properly, so she stuck it on a fry pan upside down and cooked the crackling that way. Is that how she did it? Yeah. Oh, that's so 
I think the more I watch of these episodes, the more I start to like realize that yeah, there's definitely they definitely already know what the ingredient is going to be or roughly what it's going to be because yeah. so much prep has to go into it. Like they've already got all the ingredients down pat. Everybody else already knows what they're doing. Like all the like the chefs that they've brought in, like to help them out. Yeah. They just made an interesting point about the fish, how it, if it's killed straight away, the taste doesn't fully develop. So if it has time to settle, the taste will be different. So that's why they're using a lot of seasoning right now. Yeah. I'm definitely not as, like, disgusted at the view of innards and stuff like that now. After all the episodes we've watched, I feel like I've, like, kind of developed. Yeah. It's very interesting how it's the same Iron Chef. Like, you don't win and then you're the Iron Chef. Yeah. You're like, you've beat, beaten the Iron Chef. You don't become the Iron Chef after you win. Yeah. <laughs> lavish, lavish stewed. Ara. Lavish. So throughout the episode, they mentioned this East vs. West, so I looked into it a bit further, and it's Kanto versus Kansai. Now, Kanto is the eastern region, while the western region is Kansai, and they're both on the main island of Honshu. So Kanto has got the modern capital of Tokyo and the surrounding cities, including Yokohama, Chiba, and Satama, while Kansai has got the historic capital of Osaka, and Ki as well as Kyoto, Kobe, and Nara. Um, both the chefs are from different regions, which is pretty interesting. And later on in the episode, you, find, you can see the judges react to that, and they can tell the different tastes in both regions. We will ring in the new year with a smile. So, Kandagawa is from the east, and Nakamura is from the west. Cooking is from the heart. I love that. <laughs> Look how honourable he is to the fish. Damn, this has gone on forever. This has gone for a while, yeah. I think we've gone through about three minutes of just introducing the dish. Each dish. Mm. It's been at least two and a half minutes, three minutes of introducing, introducing dishes. I love their reactions. It's always laughing about how good it is. Oh, he's used turnips. That's going to annoy Nakamura. If you, if you told me before we even watched Iron Chef that the four people judging it were all food reviewers, I would have been like, yep, I agree, because they definitely know what they're talking about for people. Yeah, for people who are very descriptive, they, they know what to say and tastes. Like, they understand taste. It's very interesting. Oh, that's interesting. So where they're from affects the way they season their food, and how you can t and how they can taste the differences in the food, sim sim just yeah. based on where they're from. You can tell by Nakamura's reactions, he really needs this win. Yeah. I swear they use that same shot for Nakamura every time. Like they've just repeated the shot. Yeah. Final victory of the year. So this is Kandagawa's fourth attempt. Yeah, yeah. Fourth attempt. No way. Oh my god, that's huge. Let's see the scores. 19 20. 17 16. 2019. 17. Wow. 3 1. But the scores are so close. They've recognized yeah. a real Don when they've seen one, so... Oh, okay, so... In my suggested videos, Nakamura has one more um, battle, but he's a, a retirement one, so he, w he does yeah. follow through in the end and retires. But I guess it is with without one last battle. So Nakamura does indeed retire next episode uh, in a one hour special. <laughs> okay, so that was the final episode. It's been fun, it's been a long journey, and it was an enjoyable experience. Bada bing, bada boom. Good night.